Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. Happy Saturday. Let me make sure that I am live. I'm your girl, Kristen Nicole Mann, and I am back with another live. Let me see if I'm public, though, because give me one second. I'm going to be recording my podcast along with uh, chit-chatting with y'all because I got some stuff to talk about. Okay, let me make sure I share it to my pages. Well, just one. Okay, so let me make sure my podcast is on and then I can get started. All right, take my airing out because my podcast if you don't follow my podcast, it is called No or Never, aka Now or Never. And we're going to be talking about Kim Kardashian today. So tune in, listen up. Um, so this week has been a funny week, I want to say. Um, I want to talk about this Kim Kardashian situation of her kind of um, saying her comments and uh, if you don't know who Kim Kardashian is, she's a mogul, um, I guess you would say, in pop culture. And I'm a person that keeps up with pop culture because I just like, I really enjoy it. And that's why it's called Now or Never, um, aka No or Never, because I keep you up with what you need to know. But um, this past week has been interesting in the women's business world because of what Kim Kardashian has came out and said. And I want to talk about how I felt when I first saw it and um, how other women felt when they first saw it. And I have to say that it has triggered a lot of women who are in um, business, per se. And so when I first saw it, um, there was this clip that uh, it was an interview they were doing for Variety magazine. And it's like, that's a national magazine, um, very highly syndicated. And so there was this short clip that was floating around social media. And <laughs> Kim basically was being asked, what's your advice for women in business? And um, well, all of her family was being asked and she kind of abruptly said it um, just with authority and like she was upset about it. And she was like, you know, my advice is that women get their lazy ASS up. Like she used, you know, some choice of words and she was very stern with it, though. And it was like really short and straight to the point. Um, and she was basically telling women, you're lazy, get up and work in short terms. And it triggered a lot of people. It triggered, including myself, it triggered a lot of people, um, women per se, because they were like, who does she think she is to tell everyone that they're lazy and they're not getting to work? And so I had to repent because I had commented and said some things about her past and all these things. And if you don't know what repenting means, it means I asked, I had to ask God for forgiveness because I was triggered. I'm not going to lie. I was triggered when I first saw it. And I was like, what, like, how could she say this? And then as the week went on, I had to reflect because I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. We have to take all of this in context. I'm a, I'm working on my understanding. Um, I used to be a person that just didn't want to understand anything. I judged by physical appearance, parents and what people have done in their past and stuff. And I've been really working on this. So I had to take a step back. And I had to think about what she was saying to women. And when it all boiled down to what I reflected upon, I was like, you know what? She might have a point because 
when I started entrepreneurship per se, or believed in my side hustle more than um, just doing it as stepping into the business world, I used to go to these women's, you know, brunches, these women's events, these women's, you know, whatever they called it. And I used to like it felt like a mystical, magical world where, you know, we're going to be kumbaya and yes, you could do it. Yes, girl, whatever you speak, you know, will come into manifestation. Yes, yes, yes. And um, you would go back home out of this mystical world and you would kind of it would be hard for you to muster yourself up to do the work after leaving that environment. And I thought to myself, I was like, did that really set women up to be um, strong with their work ethic? Like, did it really set them up or did they think it would just fall out of the sky? Because manifestation is a huge word. You see it like talked about all the time. Um, it's even in the Bible. Um, it's even in the non-Bible books and all these, you know, it's everywhere. But I was like, I had to ask myself, did that really set women up to have a good work ethic? And then I started dissecting, like, who do I learn from? Um, what do I watch, like, as far as podcasts? What books do I mainly read? And are they coming from women or are they coming from men? And to my surprise, I actually listen to more men's podcasts and YouTubes and um I take advice from men more than I do with women. And I had to ask myself, why do I take advice from men more than women? Well, men, they're not emotional about their decisions. They just do it. They always have a purpose of why they're doing something, whether it's survival mode, whether it's for their family, whether it's just like, you know, something, it's always a purpose of why men step into whether their career or entrepreneurship. And I like that, you know, I, I don't, I'm not an emotional person myself. So when it comes to, you know, these women spaces that I used to go to, to try to get encouraged, I really couldn't relate. You know, I really couldn't, um, I could to a certain point, but I was I, I just wanted the emotion to be taken out. And so when we look at Kim Kardashian and her life, she grew up around this. Like she grew up around people with heavy influence. Um, her father was an attorney. She um, he knew a lot of famous people. She lived, you know, in the um, Beverly Hills sector of this country. Um, in California, and she's seeing this growing up day to day, like people really getting to work and um, enjoying the fruits of that. And so when you step back and you kind of like take how you feel about the person out, you start to understand that she might be actually uh, telling the truth about women in business per se, because and I think most of the people that were triggered, unfortunately, were pe women with more disadvantages than other cultures. Like it was a certain culture, um, including my culture. We were the main ones that were upset. Like we were the main ones like coming at her, talking about her past, you know, with um, she has a lot of things that you could look her up. You could Google her. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't want to go down that path, but um, she has a lot of things, you know, that was on her um, track record of, you know, her getting to success, but also what we consume as women, we don't take it into consideration that if we consume their show or we consume their products, we consume all these things that they have, it's their business. We're actually paying into their work. <laughs> And so we can't get mad at Kim Kardashian for saying what she's saying because she's actually out here working. And when she said it and it went viral and it was shared and people kept talking about it like I am now, um, this is her work. This is like she used her influence to uh, say something that she may 
see women not saying. We don't see a lot of women kind of talking about the structure of how things should be in place. We more so see them talk about, you need to empower yourself to get to that point. But very rarely we hear women talk about the steps, like the core steps. We see the men talking about it. They're in there, you know, on their podcast with several men. Um, for instance, I watch um, Eric Thomas podcast all the time, but it's for men. And they all talk about their lives, how they uh, view things. But the common denominator is that they get to work. They get to work. Women, I have some podcasts that I like to listen to. Um, um, what is it called? Patrice Washington. I listen to her podcast a lot. Um, and she talks about finances. I listen to uh, Rachel Luna's podcast. You can look all these you know, things up and listen for yourself. Um, but I rarely, when I look and dissect on what really speaks to my soul and my spirit is that it's it's usually spearheaded by men because men are really good with leadership men are really good at putting their mind on something and getting it done and um women we can do that too but i think sometimes we lose our purpose quicker than than the men because we have so much going on we're mothers we some of us may be wives some of us are single without mothers and we're just kind of like trying to figure it out um and yeah we have these act the access to all of these things to help us but we are when it comes down to it women are really emotional creatures we um kind of sway with what's going on and we don't really try to cut out the emotion um we really have a hard time sometimes making decisions and so when kim kardashian said that i kind of went back and read the comments outside of my comments <laughs> i went back and read the comments and i think the reason why some of the black women especially got triggered is because we look at it as you had an advantage you had an advantage to get ahead you have the connections you've lived the lifestyle you've um you know maintained this certain image and all these things and when you start a business especially as a black woman woman you're not um you're there's a lot of odds stacked against you um there's a lot of odds social media will make it seem like it's not but there is when you get to a certain point um the respect factor um there's still a lot of men dominating these industries that we're getting into so when you come in and you're kind of like glammed up and you're not um there's particular culture and they're just seeing what has been ingrained in them and we got to think time is different time is different it's no longer the baby boomer era it's now the millennial era and now we're taking you know leadership and taking stuff by storm and now we're the the adults with the children and so things are going to be different and when i look back at the women who influenced my life um i you know i appreciate the women seeing them go to work i have aunts that worked all the time my mom worked um she went to college and had a career um and all the women that i've seen growing up they always worked but they didn't necessarily show the purpose of them doing the work they necessarily they didn't say really the reason why they were working so i just saw the action but i didn't really see the reasoning behind it and I think women sometimes give other women a disservice by not sharing, you know, certain things and not saying like there there's a structure to this. You can't manifest everything where it's going to just fall from the sky. There's actual steps of action that have to take place. So whether that's um, you have to work on giving back to the community more, whether you have to work on financial like finances um whether you have to work on communication these are the things that were kind of left out on in the entrepreneur realms 
um, when I went and it was specifically women. It was all these mystical things like, I am great. I am this. I am that. That's great and all. But when you get yourself to a point of encouragement, that's when you have to execute. And that's what Eric Thomas and them always talk about. Execute, execute, execute. And for some women, that's hard. For some women, that's hard because their emotions are in the way. Well, I can't. And you see men, they just like do it. They just be like, I got a family or I'm single. I want to go on trips or I'm this or that. Like that's going to be my purpose. And that's what I'm going to operate in. I'm going to work for this specific purpose. And so when Kim Kardashian comes out and she says with um, some choice of words, like get yourself to work um, and stop being lazy a lot of people were triggered they showed their true colors of where they were at mindset wise because they felt like she was scolding them but and i did too but then i was like you know what i need to get to work too speaking of which this podcast is sponsored by my legendary lessons we use our hands book and you can find this on my website in this section and um yeah we're teaching i'm teaching children how to get to work by using their hands i'm teaching children lessons um within these children's books and you can support this podcast and anything that i do with the work that i do okay so i thought you know that it was a good um you know live and podcast episode to kind of like decipher what was going on there um she set the world on ablaze with uh what she said but there's some truth to it and sometimes the truth hurts sometimes the truth hurts sometimes we gotta take a step back and say are we really doing the work or are we just talking Are we really trying to be a better individual in what we decide to do? Because there's so many people, especially women, saying, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm this, I'm that. But, you know, there's no fruit. There's no fruit. And I personally don't want to be that anymore. I don't want to be a person with no fruit. I want to get to work and I want it to have a purpose. And I don't want to be just doing things to look uh, or keep up with the image of things. We have to really dissect our lives and figure out, like, you know, what are we doing here? Are we doing this, you know, just to keep up and and look cool? Or are we doing this to really um, do the work and extend, you know, the kingdom? And so I want to kind of leave you all with... um, this scripture that I go by, um, and it's really simple, but it's a good um, scripture to kind of like take into consideration, even if you don't believe, because the instructions like are in um, the Bible, and there are, you know, great self-help books, but there's instructions that we surpass and ignore every single day when it's right at our fingertips, right at our or on our nightstand. And so um, Genesis 1, 28, Genesis chapter 1, 28, it says, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So that was the new international version. And that says in itself, get to work. (laughs) Like it says, get to work. It says, be fruitful and increase in number. It says, fill the earth. Not sit back and um, wait for the manifestation to happen without you even doing any work. We can say things and our lives can line up to it, but there's still some work in between. And it says, subdue it. Let's look up what subdue means um, before I end this, because I really like to know certain definitions of things. Subdue, overcome or bring under control a feeling or per a person 
So it's literally saying overcome. To me, how I'm interpreting this scripture is overcome the emotions that you have and get to work. That's all that she really said at the end of the day. But sometimes we like to, uh, because of how a person said it, we like to write it off. And um, that's just her choice of words that she used. But she, you know, actually quoted scripture in her own way and it said rule over the fish in the sea so rule you have to rule over something what what is god giving you to rule over are you ignoring it are you saying are you looking um for the easy way out like we can't dodge certain things sometimes like actually ever because everything that we do has some form of work whether it's being a stay at home mom, whether it's being um, someone going to a nine to five, whether it's someone that automatically woke up one day and was like, I want to be an entrepreneur. There's work that has to be done. And this is what women, we should be telling ourselves, not overwork yourself with no purpose, but everything that we do on this earth has to do with work, unfortunately. So sometimes emotions have to be cut out because when entrepreneurship, I'm going to just speak on that end, you have to make decisions. You can't just be like lollygagging like, oh, man, I don't know. And then the whole week go by. And I, I mean, I'm telling you from transparency, there was weeks where I was just like taking my time, making a decision and then. There was no money at the end of the week. What am I doing? I'm an entrepreneur. Why am I taking my time? Like there's times where women, we have to make solid concrete decisions to get to work. You have to follow a structure. It's not going to just fall out the sky. And I really think the women empowerment movements um, in the past, you know, in the early 2000s, mid 2000s, before COVID, um, really set women up to think like, if I just only speak positivity into my life, everything's going to work out. You can be positive, but be positive while you work. <laughs> be positive while you work and put your hands to work. You know, like we can't just say things and think that it's going to happen. And so that mindset has changed my whole way of talking to kids, speaking into their life, because we don't want to set our children up for failure. There's work. There's work. Even if we do do the cute stuff of saying who we are and repeating these affirmations and repeating all these things, that's there's still work. You still have to get to work because affirmations don't pay my light bill. <laughs> Affirmations don't pay my car bill. Affirmations don't pay. Now, if I get to work and I put them in a book and then I publish the book and then I market the book and then I do, all of those will pay my light bills and pay my car note. But what people, how they interpret this stuff sometimes, especially women, they'll say, well, I'm going to make a million dollars today. And then what do they do? They might go sit on the couch, watch TV, people that are already making a million dollars. And that's what blows my mind is like we in society right now will consume all these people working. We will be on social media. We'll watch them do behind the scenes, especially as women. We'll watch uh, shows on Netflix. Um, my favorite particular is Selling Tampa, but um, it's not about me. Um, but Selling Tampa, we'll watch and we'll be like, oh my gosh, we'll be in such admiration as women and the whole day will go by. And we then said in the morning, in the in the mirror, I'm going to make a million dollars. But yet I'm after that, I just go to the couch, sit there, eat all day, do, you know, nothing, twiddle my thumbs. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, I didn't make the million dollars. This is not working. What is wrong with me? What's wrong with you is that you have thought you've made this or you've been under the influence of someone that has told you that you only have to speak these things 
and it's going to happen just like that. This has happened. This has contaminated the church. This has contaminated the women empowerment sector. This has contaminated the coach world. All of these people are saying this stuff because guess what? They're working, but they know you're the consumer. You're the consumer of it. So they know what they're doing. They know how to get to their end goal, but they know that on the other side, you're the consumer of it and you're not actually getting to work. So in reality, people shouldn't be so mad at what Kim said, but they should get to work to the point to where she's no longer relevant. If we're that upset, we should get to work to the point where she's no longer taking all every black woman's pennies and then has the nerve to uh, spray herself to be the same complexion as me. We should get to work so much that she's no longer relevant um, by the end of this year. So she may have set a blaze um, for people in a negative way, but I think people, women should take that in as a positive, like a, a fire like that has sparked and lit under them and they should change the narrative. They should do exactly what she said and then she won't be relevant no more. She can't come out and be like, well, nobody's gotten to work or blah, 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 whatever she decides to say. And we could be in Variety Magazine saying, this is the work that I did. <laughs> this is how I got to this point. Because we all know that there are some certain, you know, things that have helped her propel her career. We know that as consumers. But if you're a woman, I'm speaking specifically to the women that call themselves entrepreneurs, including myself, we have to take that and we kind of sort of have to do something about it if we call ourselves this. So I'm going to get to work because I have a mouth to feed. And I hope that this helped you all with um, your work ethic. <laughs> yeah, you. And um, I hope that I gave you all some insight on, you know, what she meant and how I was disturbed at first. And then I was like, hold on, pump the brakes. She's actually right. So um, I'm going to get off of here. I hope that you all have a great Saturday. It's... um. Ow. It's us, uh, you know, snowing in upstate New York. And um, I didn't have, I have stuff to do, but I, I needed to get this out because I wanted to talk about manifestation anyway. I am not a big component of it. Um, I love that it's a definition. It's a, a real word, but I really feel that women um, that was that held the position of leadership for so long, they've kind of did a disservice in telling women the structure of getting to work because everybody's saying that get to work, get to work, get to work. But what does work look like to you? You have to build a structure that fits best for your schedule, fits best for your family. All of those things. So that will probably be a part two. But thank you for tuning in. Follow me on Instagram at Kristen Nicole Mann. Um, you can also subscribe to my podcast, which is on all platforms called No or Never. I'm going to try to put a panel together on women in business to talk about this as an extension because it's it's wonderful to be in community with people and hear their perspectives. You don't always want to be the person that knows everything or doesn't want to learn from other people. So that's a little nugget. Um, uh, and how I've grown throughout these past two years, it doesn't always feel good, but it, it, it works in your favor to be in community with um, people. So I'm going to go have a good day. Bye. Bye.